Life is going to be so much less chaotic now that I actually figured out which knob goes to which burner. Hi guys, welcome back. Today on our pantry series, we're focusing on dry pasta. Yes, I know, I don't have to tell you to keep dry pasta in your pantry. But if you do need reminding, it is an extremely versatile and fantastic thing to have on hand to make quick dinners anytime. And today I'm gonna to take this spaghetti and make a delicious spaghetti and meatballs, tomato sauce, and the meatballs have a little bit of a secret. About half of the meat has been replaced with chopped mushrooms, and they are absolutely delicious. So to start off with, I have to saute some onions, so I'm gonna go back here and start that. So I'm gonna start off by cooking my onions in a little bit of oil, about a tablespoon of oil in a pot. And now it's about three cups of onions and a teaspoon of kosher salt. I like to multitask, so I'm gonna chop up my garlic while my three cups of onions are cooking. I am a huge proponent of prepping and cooking at the same time. I need two tablespoons of garlic, minced. This is two whole cans of whole peeled tomatoes that need to get ground up in a food processor. You can also use a um, immersion blender, which I do often. I'll just do, I'll blend something right in the can. Blend this up. I'm gonna go back, bring my garlic with me. The garlic goes into the pot with the onions and some hot pepper flakes. You just wanna cook that about 30 seconds, and then some of that onion is gonna get pulled out and that's gonna get reserved to go into the meatball mixture. I'm adding the garlic a little bit later because if it went in with the onions, there's the tendency for it to maybe burn. Um, and you don't want that. So pull out about half of your onions. And then to the rest of the onion mixture, that's what the tomatoes go into. And then it needs to simmer. I'm feeling vaguely, <laughs> vaguely confident about this, but it's already oozing out the bottom. So hopefully, I won't make a huge mess. And you'll notice that I'm wearing my apron up for this segment, which I almost never do. And now you know why. So to start the meatballs, I'm gonna move this to the back and bring this pan in because I'm gonna saute those mushrooms that I was talking about before I add them to my meatball mixture. So, nice large skillet, a couple tablespoons of oil, been heating a little bit. Luckily it's not too hot, it's not smoking, that's good. And I have a pound of mushrooms that are finely chopped. You can do this in the food processor. So for this, you're really wanting to like cook out all the moisture, it's gonna um, first like sizzle, and then it's gonna squeak, and then some liquid's gonna come out, and then once all that liquid uh, evaporates, then the mushrooms are done. Sizzle and squeak. You can see they are much darker, all the liquid is gone. You'll notice when you're cooking them yourself that they're very, very fragrant and they are ready. So they're gonna go right into the bowl with the onions. They're really, really cooked down. I mean, that was a huge bowl of mushrooms and it's cooked down to, I don't know, like a cup and a quarter or something like that. They need to cool just a little bit. Once your onion and your mushroom mixture has cooled just a little bit, you can start building the rest of your meatball mixture. I'm going to add a half a cup of dry breadcrumbs to the bowl, and then to that, a quarter cup of milk. Adorable little measuring cup. I like to pour the milk over the breadcrumbs to hydrate them a little. I'm gonna let that sit just for a second and chop up some herbs. Need some oregano and some fresh parsley about half a cup of parsley and a couple tablespoons of oregano. I'm gonna cut off the tougher bottom stems, but I'm not gonna remove the stems from the top, more tender part. I see no reason to do that. It seems wasteful. <laughs> and you're chopping them and this is gonna cook a little bit. Tell me in the comments below. Do you brown your meatballs? Do you not brown your meatballs? Do you use the, the oven, the broiler? Grandma style in a skillet? Not my grandma. The only thing that my grandmother, I mean, the only thing I ever really remember my grandmother cooking was, hear me out, and I thought it was so good, sweet and sour brisket and tongue. Jewish grandma specialty. 
And I think that she would like make it like once a year or whatever and then freeze it and then she would reheat it and then she would freeze those leftovers and then she would take it out again and reheat it. So by the time we had it, it was always like kind of desiccated, but I really, really loved it. Okay, so the breadcrumbs have been a little bit hydrated. I'm just gonna mix them in with the mushroom and onion mixture before I add the rest of my ingredients because while I was blabbing away, the, the, the breadcrumbs did sort of soak in all of the milk and they turned a little bit into a clump. That will not happen to you because you will just mix this stuff all together. But if it does, just sort of mash it up with a fork. The herbs can go into the uh, bowl with your mushroom mixture. And then you'll add some cheese. I'm using Pecorino Romano today. You can use Parmesan as well. Third of a cup of grated Pecorino Romano or Parm. One large egg. Uh, similarly to the breadcrumb thing, I usually just crack my egg into the side of the bowl, like make a little bit of space on the side of the bowl and whisk it up a little bit before I mix it in uh, so I don't get another bowl dirty. I know I go on and on and on and on and on about this, but I do not have a dishwasher at home. So I try to make as few bowls as possible when I'm making literally anything. <laughs> Some salt and pepper, teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And you'll notice that I'm mixing all of my ingredients together before I add the meat. And that's because I don't want to overmix my meat. So you're getting most of your mixing action ahead of time and then the meat just goes in and you can mix it much more lightly. You should look for a meat about 85% lean. So it's a pretty fatty meat. If you get something that's a little bit leaner, you'll be okay in this instance because there's so much moisture and flavor and all this other stuff being added by those sauteed mushrooms and the onions that I think you can go with a little bit of a leaner meat in this instance. You saw that I started off using a spoon, but I, I really think that the best way, as much as I don't want to admit it, to get this to, to really properly combine is with your hands. And now I'm regretting that I didn't oil my pan. So I have to wash my hands for a sec, then I'm gonna get them dirty again. I have a sheet pan here. You know what, I'm just gonna use my hands. So oil your sheet pan, that was probably a little more than I needed, but it's okay. You can use a little bowl of water, you can use a scoop, but now I'm thinking, since I have to roll them anyway, but about one and a half inch balls. Damp hands help them to not stick to your hands so you don't get like a big sticky mess. And then, boom, roll. Actually, you know what really helps? I just got oil all over my hands. These are the most beautiful meatballs I've ever made. Maybe you're supposed to oil your hands. New tip. <laughs> and doubly good is, um, that they, like maybe that enhances the browning if you have oily hands instead of slightly damp hands. Oh my God, I've just discovered something incredible, you guys. Okay, we take the pasta and get these guys into the broiler. The rack in your broiler should be about four inches away from the heating source. Drop your pasta, make sure that you salt your water. This is how I do salt in pasta water. Don't freak out. That's like, I don't know, two tablespoons. And then drop your pasta. Usually takes about 12 minutes for spaghetti to cook, but you know, read the package directions because every brand is slightly different. Just stir it around to loosen it and then set a timer. Really set a timer for your meatballs, which need to broil for about five minutes. My meatballs have been cooking for about four minutes. I've got about a minute left and my tomato sauce has been simmering for 20 minutes. How do we feel about each other today? I trust you, tomato sauce. It's looking good, it's nice and reduced. This sauce is pretty thick. Um, the recipe does not say to, but I always, for safety, try to save some pasta water, so I'm gonna take that out now because I'll probably forget when I drain my pasta. And then I think it's time to take the meatballs out. And they're gonna get transferred directly into the tomato sauce. And if I feel like I need it, I'll add a little bit of that pasta water. Don't leave your uh, spoons sitting in cooking things. I used to get yelled at about that all the time. That person who used to yell at me um, would say, don't cook your spoon, cook your food. It's like solid advice, I think. What a dream. What, what's going on here is these got browned in the broiler, right? And now they're gonna finish cooking in my sauce. It's pretty thick. So I am gonna add just a splash of this pasta cooking water, just a little bit, so that the meatballs are 
like swimming in the sauce. They don't need to be fully, fully, like completely immersed. It doesn't have to be super duper liquid. It's not gonna reduce further, so you don't wanna overdo it. But I kind of felt like it was more like a puree than a sauce. And so I'm adjusting the texture. I'm covering this. Should cook for another uh, five-ish minutes. And while I'm waiting, I can drain my pasta. All right, so I got all the pasta out. And then I'm gonna uh, toss to the pasta with just some of the sauce. Normally what I do is I combine the sauce and the pasta together. In this instance, we have meatballs in there that are like kind of too delicate to do that. Transfer about a cup and a half of sauce to your pasta. Okay, so toss this together. Really as much sauce as you need to nicely coat. Plate or ball, your choice. You wanna be fancy. Styling spaghetti is so scary to me. For photo shoots, not for like life or for this. But, but this is what we do is we swirl it around a fork like this and then we lift it up and you place it on the plate like this and then you sort of like pull your fork out like that. That's if you want like a more contained situation. Really what I usually do is do that and then just like mess it up a little bit. But if you wanna know how those like perfect coils of pasta happen, that's how it happens. A little uh, ladle of more sauce on top and then some meatballs. You can add some cheese, parm, pecorino, a little bit of hot pepper flakes. And I'm gonna do just a little oil. Really delicious olive oil is pretty much the best finisher for any dish. And there you have it. A delicious pantry meal, utilizing one of my favorites, <laughs> spaghetti. I'm laughing, I know it's silly, but you know, pasta is a great thing to have in your pantry at all times. I highly recommend keeping a variety. But also, this dish is incredible. These meatballs are great. You're gonna feel virtuous when you eat it. Let me know in the comments below what other kinds of recipes you wanna see, and you know, enjoy yourself in the kitchen. If you wanna see more recipes like this, please click like and subscribe. Enjoy.